Hey guys, welcome back to the Vice Casting Couch. Today we're going to be installing Calyx OS on a Google Pixel 5. This will be done on Ubuntu and will be a Linux tutorial. Calyx OS is a custom ROM built on the Android open source project and its whole goal is to help increase your privacy and security while also de-googling your phone. When we click download, we can see it supports the whole Pixel lineup from the Pixel 5 to the Pixel 2 and it also supports the Xiaomi Mi A2. I'd recommend against the Pixel 2 in the Xiaomi phone as the Pixel 2 no longer gets security updates and the Xiaomi phone is running Android 10. From here we're going to click installation instructions and we're going to download the flashing script for our respective operating system. They have it for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. There's also a very important note at the top of the page that there's two variants of Pixels in the United States. One that Google has completely unlocked that you can get from them and one that Verizon sells that is locked down and you can't unlock the bootloader. And if you can't unlock the bootloader, you can't install Calyx. So if, you, if your phone is from Verizon, I'd recommend trying to sell it and getting one from Google or, you know, maybe make your voice known to Verizon. From here, we're just gonna throw the zip file of the image and the flashing script into a new folder we made. I called mine Calyx OS, but you can name it whatever you want. And from here on, we're just gonna verify the integrity of the files we downloaded. We're taking this huge leap installing a custom ROM to help enhance our privacy and security, but we just want to make sure that this is actually the file that it says it is. So we're just going to run SHA-256-SUM against the flashing script and the image file, and we're going to compare that hash that our computer generates to the one on the Calyx website. If both of the hashes match, that ensures that there's no corruption and no man-in-the-middle attack going on. From here, we'll continue on to the next step. My phone was brand new in the box and it still had the Google setup I had to run through. The only part that I didn't skip was this one because on this connect to Wi-Fi screen, for whatever reason, you have to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you don't, the OEM unlocking button will be grayed out and will look like this. In the arms of the angel. This is very unfortunate and the only way I was able to resolve it was to factory reset my phone. After I did the factory reset and I connect to a Wi-Fi precisely at that screen, then I was able to continue on and unlock my bootloader. From here, we're going to skip through everything we can because we don't want to give Google any more information. We don't want to sign in with an account. We don't want to, you know, use our location or none of that. We're just going to skip everything and skip all these apps and get to the setting app. In the setting app, we're going to scroll down to about our phone and then click on the build number seven times. This will enable developer options. Then we go to system, advanced, developer options, and then click allow USB debugging and OEM unlocking. From there, we're going to connect our USB cable to our computer. And on the phone, you'll see USB debugging connected. Another message will pop up saying, hey, do you want to allow this computer USB debugging info? And there'll be a little checkbox. Make sure to click always allow from this computer and then click allow. From there, the script will take care of everything. Anything in yellow will be something that you have to do manually. So at this point, you have to click the volume up and the power button to manually tell it to unlock the bootloader. This is just a security step and something that is easily done. Now from here on out, it's pretty automated and the script will take care of everything for you. Another thing I ran into at the very beginning was I found out not all USB-C cables are made to the same standard. So on one USB-C cable I connected it and I ran the script and it said there's no devices available to be flashed. If you run into that problem, try a different cable as a lot of these cheap ones are, are just garbage. The other thing I want to say is I want to give a lot of kudos to the Calyx Institute. They do a lot of great work and this install script was by far the easiest custom ROM install I've ever done. They've completely automated everything. There's no messing with custom recovery, you know, no ADB, no twerp, none of that. It just runs through it and takes care of all the business for you. So good job, Calyx. I'd also recommend looking into them. They have an unlimited 4G hotspot and they do a lot of awesome stuff like run tour nodes. So at this end part, you can see we have to press the volume up button one more time and then the power button to lock our bootloader again. This just secures our device again. From here on out, it'll restart, and you'll have this message every time you turn your phone on that, hey, it's loading a different operating system. This happens because when your Pixel boots up, it'll compare the signature of your operating system to one of stock Android. If they don't match, it'll just flash that message, 
and there's no way to turn it off so it's just something you kind of have to live with but from here we're going to be in the calyx setup we're going to click next and select our language from here you'll have a screen asking if you want to set up wi-fi and or your sim card i'm going to skip that for now if you want to leave location services enabled you can choose so but you can also disable it on the screen so that's your choice you can choose to set up a fingerprint and or pin I'm going to skip that for now as you can always set these up later. Something you can't change later on is if you want Micro-G installed or not. Now you might be wondering, what is Micro-G? And Micro-G is a free and open source alternative to the Google Play Services APIs. Now these are called upon by tons of apps and if you don't have them, these apps will break. There are some slight privacy risks associated with it though. And Calyx does outline that on their FAQ so I'd recommend giving that a read. Now, another thing I'd recommend checking out is this crowdsource database called Plexus. You can type in an app name and you can look it up and you have two scores, one for a Google phone or one with Micro-G. Most of the time, if it's running Micro-G, it'll be usable. It, without it, it might be severely broken. On this additional apps page, you'll be able to choose if you want a bunch of pre-installed apps. There's stuff like the Aurora Store, the Briar Secure Messenger, the Calyx VPN, the DuckDuckGo Privacy Browser, the Tor Browser, Signal, a lot of good stuff. Even the stuff I've never heard about, I left check because all this stuff's open source and they're pretty cool apps. And I, you know, I really want to get my feet wet with more open source applications just to have more private and secure mobile experience. So we're just going to let our device get set up. Doesn't take too long. You do have the option to restore from a backup, but because I don't have one, I'm just going to skip that for now. And we can click start. From here, we have one more thing we have to do before our phone is ready to be our daily driver. So we're just going to scroll down and we're going to find the settings app. Sometimes it hides. And we're just going to click on it and we're going to go to about our phone and then click on the build number seven times to re-enable developer options. From here, we go to system, advanced, developer options, and we'll just uncheck OEM unlocking. This will then lock the bootloader and we do have to restart our device for this protection feature to take effect. And so we'll just restart it really quick. Now once you're in Calyx, you know, it's just like any other Android phone. It's, it's snappy, it's quick, it, it feels like stock Android. It just has this green kind of theme to it, but it's just that peace of mind you get from knowing that Google isn't spying on you, that you really do own your device and that you're running all this free and open source software that doesn't you know, compromise on privacy and security just to make a buck off tracking their users. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you liked it, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or concern, please sure to leave it in the comments below. If you dislike the video, give us a thumbs down. But be sure to check out some of our other content. We do have a podcast that we kind of have a semi-regular schedule for. And, you know, thank you guys for watching.